Hey, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Business Unusual Extra Credit with me, Barbara Corcoran, brought to you by my good friends at AT AT&T Business. Today, we continue our series highlighting some of the amazing entrepreneurs I invested in on Shark Tank. Today, I'm joined by Jim Salikas and Sabin Lomack, founders of Cousins Maine Lobster. And incidentally, they're actually cousins besides. I invested in Cousins Maine Lobster 10 years ago on Shark Tank, and since then, they've grown their lobster empire from one food truck on weekends to 50 trucks and restaurants across the country. So let's learn today, together, what's at the core of their enormous success. Hello, gentlemen. So, so good to see your faces. So nice to have you with us today. I'm thinking we're going to learn a lot from you that we're going to share with all of our listeners. So make sure you're on your game, okay? You feeling good about this? Oh, yeah. Well, I feel a little better than Jim, but, you know, that's the standard stuff for me. The usual silly competition I see is alive and well. (laughs) All right. I'm going to start with uh, what I really have learned over the last many years on Shark Tank as to what separates the men from the boys, the girls from the women. And I believe the number one trait, honestly, is an entrepreneur who could think fast on their feet. I know it sounds simple, but a guy or a gal that could stand in a spot, think of a solution for a problem, trust their instinct and move very, very fast. And so I want to ask you, um, I guess, number one, do you agree with that being your best attribute? Because I see that in each of you very much so. And how do you manage that if you don't have it naturally? Have you learned it or have you always been able to do that? Yeah, I think it, I, this is a great point. I think it is the key to success for any entrepreneur. I think Saban and I both Jim, have You're it. being honest here. You really I, I'm, being dead, I'm being dead serious because when your back's against the wall and you're two guys on Shark Tank 10 years ago and you have one food truck and you need to make it work, then you need to adapt with anything that's thrown your way. And it sounds cheesy and cliche, but I think that our ability to pivot, whether you're talking uh, the, the, you know, the, the COVID days or anything that comes at you from our last 10 years, it's critical to, critical to success. I mean, specifically speaking for us, when, when you know, the whole world was shutting down with COVID um, and people weren't going out and restaurants were closing, we just said, how do we keep business going? How do we keep our franchisees doing sales, our entire business doing it? And the answer for us was developing our, our mobile app, which you know well about, Um, And that was allowing customers to order from their cars, order from lines, socially distance, be outside. And it made orders more accurate, more efficient, more timely. um, And that allowed them to still have our food. And what's better than that? It kept our business going. We went above projections. And that's a simple example to me of where we said, hey, rather than getting our brains and say, COVID's happening, let's get concerned about it was how do we keep, you know, forging forth? And that was a really good example of what we did. My memory of that was that you turned on your heels almost immediately. Was that, uh, am I remembering? Well, I feel like you turned that out and totally pivoted, which everybody talks about doing, but didn't you do that like within two flat months? Yeah, it was, re- it was really quick and far more quick than it probably should have been or would have ever been scheduled to be. And while it wasn't perfect, it eventually got there and it gave customers that were relying on wanting our food so that, you know, when there was so much doom and gloom, as everyone knows, during COVID, at least customers would say, hey, I'm going to go celebrate. I'm going to have a lobster roll on a Tuesday or a Saturday or for whatever it may be. It was a feel good thing. It's the champagne, like we say. They still got to do that. Um, and I think that's in large part because we made ourselves even more accessible than a food truck already was. But what do you do to do that as a matter of course and habit in your business all the time? Do you look at things and think, what can we change? What can we change? Or do you need a pandemic to bring out the best in uh, totally doing things differently? Do you do it all the time? Yeah, You definitely don't need a pandemic, nor should we ever hope for another one again, right? But I think think the ability, when when you talk about thinking quick on your feet, I think that comes with being fearless. And I think that's something that yeah. truthfully we've learned from you. That is one of the, the biggest things that we learn from you is, is being fearless. When you're a young entrepreneur, um, you're, you're very tight and tense and you're, 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 you don't want to lose money. Mm. So you good, oftentimes good don't, to serve. <laughs> right. But you, but, but you don't want to take chances. And that oftentimes goes against your gut. And your gut is what got you there. So our gut got us on Shark Tank. Our gut got us that first food truck. Food truck. So why not double down and keep doing things and keep trying ideas? So I think the reason why we're so successful now or why we just kind of think on our feet is because we're confident. Mm-hmm. We're not scared. And we're not afraid to lose money. We're not afraid to fail. 
And once you get over that big hump, which can you, any, any entrepreneur can relate to, once you get over that, you don't need a pandemic. You just go look at your business. Go, I want to make this better. Let's, let's try it. Mm -hmm. Yet I remember, Sabin, you were only in business, I think, maybe a year and a half. So you weren't fearless at that point in time that I recall. And I remember shortly after I closed on your business, we talked Shark Tank into coming out to Maine to give you your first update with our design being we wanted to sell franchisees. That was our goal. Even we didn't have any, but we wanted to sell them. And tell us the story of your fearlessness, which blew me away when the producer sat on the set and what he had to say about our hats on our chefs with cousins written on them. Yeah. Uh, it that little a, picture for me. Such a funny story that, you know, uh, it's, it's a great memory. Ten, ten years ago, um, <clears throat> we're in Maine. We set, up, uh, we set up this entire shoot. And before we get there, Barbara, of course, the, the creative eye says, we have to have big chef hats with, with cousins written all over them. And that, that's going to be the attention of everyone, all the millions of people watching. So we do. We execute it. You, and by the way, you pull those hats out overnight. I yeah, gave them yeah. to you the day before and they all had them on their heads. Exactly. <laughs> I, was up, I was up stitching all night. He's a phenomenal stitcher. Uh, so, so, so we're there and it, we're about to roll cameras and uh, the producer comes in, right? And he says, oh, what are these hats? Get, no, 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 lose the hats, lose the hats. And without it's fail, too much, he said, yeah. Rolls off my tongue and says, it's, it's company policy. We have to keep them on. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, Okay. I love it to hear all it all right. over again. Okay. And, and I, I don't know if you, if you nudged me or if you said, is that true? Or if we talked about it later. No, but, later. You know, I, I'd be yeah, smart yeah, enough to, yeah, to ask yeah, you on the yeah, spot. You, yeah. You've never, That's, you've never forgotten that story. And I think, you know, that might be a combination of street smarts. Um, but, you know, I think, um, you know, listen, you, you got to roll with it and you just got to keep working and keep doing things. And, you know, we did. It's company policy and we haven't worn the hat since. So, oh. <laughs> you know, when I sat at home with my family and watched the update on Shark Tank, the minute I saw the screen with what were there, 50 people with those hats on yeah, yeah. blanketing the screen, bright red letters, cousins, 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 cousins. I looked at everybody and said, that was my idea how to get credit. That was my idea to have those hats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a good one. It, it's just I, st I still get so much joy out of hearing you tell the story. I've told it a million times, but that's what. I mean by fast on, on your feet. And you do believe that is a ma major thing that entrepreneurs do. You, have, you definitely feel like that's number one, you said? I, I think yeah. that entrepreneurs are inherently scrappy. And like we, we call ourselves blue collar really often. But right, mm -hmm. you know, I think whether you want to call it scrappy or blue collar or tenacious, when I, when I, I think about you back in the day and you're, you're grinding your way through the New York City real estate market, like it wasn't pretty at times. It was just, but, you, but we get it done. And so the word entrepreneur has this kind of really grand term to it. But when, uh, when everyone is in the trenches, you're just working your butt off and you're not taking no for an answer. So whether it's the hat or whether it's the ability for us to, to get more lobster or for you to, to close the biggest deal in New York City history, it's just us getting it done. And that's what good entrepreneurs do. And if you're not fast on your feet, though, you get left behind. Like that, that to me is quite literally the thing. It's like what you guys would say on Shark Tank. Well, what's just stopping me from doing this? I got a lot of money. I'll throw it at this. And I'll just, you know, or you're going to get gobbled up by a big company and they're going to do it. So mm -hmm. like, I think you always need to stay quick on your feet or thinking or able to pivot or adjust or be prepared to what's coming before it comes. Because otherwise, yeah, you're going to get trampled. Like we're, we were one food truck with two guys. Like, of mm -hmm. course, anyone could have passed us if we weren't doing these things day in and day out. Mm -hmm. what, what's your attitude towards social media? You're so darn good at it, but what do you think it mostly does for you? I know it's built your brand, but for the people listening who have smaller companies who want to build their brand through social media, what do you see the role of social media being and which are the most important platforms? Um, I think it's an essential role in building a company. And it's an easy, fun, free, mostly free, unless you pay for things, but free way for you to, showcase who you are from a humanistic side and what your product is. For us, um, it took us a while to figure out what our real voice was, the word voice, like what do we stand for? Who are we? Um, we actually were right about the ideas when we were on Shark Tank. It was family, it was tradition, it was lobster. You know, really kind very of clear about that. Very yeah. clear. But back then we didn't know if that was a good idea or not. You know, we're just I fell for up. it. I didn't know you yeah. weren't sure of we yourself. You, you, you fell for it, right? But we didn't, right? So we were going, is this really, really, 
you know, the best way for us to showcase our business. Mm -hmm. Over the years, social media has proven our point. When we put out things about our family, when we're silly and we, they see our banter between Jim and I, or it's just that beautiful food photo. Those are the things that people resonate with the most. Mm -hmm. So now that we understand that, man, it's, 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 it's like a advertisement every time you put something out. So if you use that to your advantage and you show humility, people love it. And I've even talked to you about that, right? Where I said, yes, Barb, you, you know, being yourself, showing you who you are. You we made a difference you, there. Yes. We, we know who you are. The people want to know who you are. Yes. So lowering that guard and then presenting yourself, I think it really allows people to like you more. Absolutely. You're not just a product. You're not just a lobster roll company. We are family. And when you see that, you end up liking it more. So I think it's essential, absolutely yeah. essential. You were actually very helpful to uh, my social media team and I, because I was putting forth an entrepreneur expert image, who I am clearly in my work. Uh, but I did one silly uh, social media post, something in the bathroom, I think. I can't remember. Or maybe I don't want to remember. And you told me, that's the way. You hit it. That's who they want. They don't want that fancy lady. They want the silly lady. Keep doing it. And I really did make a, a 90 degree turn and started doing ridiculous things, especially on TikTok. And people just eat that stuff. It, it's yep. shocking to me. It's because it's approachable. Yeah. Not, so, not all of us are going to be on Shark Tank or not all of us are going to be this or do this. But when that's why people follow brands and they like, especially brands like ours and, and, and smaller brands as they work their way up is they go, I like those guys or I yeah. like that girl. I like, I want to, I want to support them. And well, social media is an easy way to, to, to tell them who you are. People don't tell me that about the either of you. They always say, I love the cousins. I love the cousins. And that's the <laughs> result of social media. I think predominantly, you know it, you know, it. I don't have to tell you anything new. Uh, what are you looking for? What traits are you looking for in a new hire? Yeah, ones you would not live without. Yeah. So whether that's us hiring corporately for our team that is managing our entire franchise system nationwide, or whether that's hiring people for our trucks or restaurants, you're ultimately looking for the same things, in our opinion. And we've learned it maybe the hard way. We're not hiring a resume. You're not hiring a chef that comes on our truck and wants to change things and tell us how to make a lobster roll. And we're not looking for someone you know, in-house that's going to sit there and say, I got 20 years of sales and marketing experience. Let me come in and do it. We look for obviously phenomenal people, but people that are coachable and trainable so that we can come in and say, this is a cousin's main lobster way. This is what we think and where we're headed. And of course, always open to their advice and thoughts because it's this collaborative thing, um, but also people that we can empower and that we want everyone to be able to have their own path and be able to put their handprint on the company, be that serving a lobster roll out of a truck uh, or maybe that's our compliance and national training team our social media team. So I think always coachable, trainable, um, and people are going to come in and live and breathe this thing and get so excited about it like we all do. And I think that's ultra important when we're looking for franchisees. You know, like that's the, the, the bloodline of our business. And we make it very simple. We say there's two things we want with franchisees. We want to be able to have a beer with them and hang out and talk about their family, their vacations, just like we do with you, which is why there's really, a really nice rapport and relationship. And two, we want to we want to have franchisees that we would want to work for because we think, especially during the COVID, the last two, three years where hiring was so hard, when it's so competitive and when the workforce is scarce, you want to sit there and be working for people that you love to work for, that you have fun with, that you're valued and feel appreciated. And it's not just, I'll give you another dollar an hour. Like it's really that kind of culture and fabric they're creating. Um, and you want to go to, to battle for them. And that's what we've seen with our most successful franchisees is that their staff want to work for them. We believe our staff like to work for us. And you, Barb, said that early on. You're like, for each franchisee, you should find the best average of Jim and Saban. And mm -hmm. I think that's, I mean, those two pieces are really important for that's us. A, that's a hard average to find, honestly, because you bring so much to the table in wild ass enthusiasm, in your work ethic. I mean, I, I almost feel like when I visit any of your trucks and particularly your corporate quarters, everybody is so happy to be there. The energy level is bouncing off the walls. It's like you have found your people. I just don't know how you consistently do that. I remember early on when you hired a couple of franchisees, you weren't so careful and mm -hmm. you learn in short order never to do that again. You became so careful with letting people in your front door. What's the worst trait in someone that you say, I can't train them, just not going to do it. Other than don't be like Saban. Don't be like Saban. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I think, I mean, Jim said not coachable. 
I think yeah. when people come in with ego mm. and they come in knowing everything mm. and wanting to, you know, well, this is my way and this is how I've done it. And this is this and this, and you feel that, 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 that barrier. And oftentimes, it, you know, we as the employers need to remember not to exude that type of ego and mm. lowering the guard and just being kind of easygoing. But if I feel ego or, um, and Jimmy talked about resumes. We don't really care much about resumes. Mm. We, we care about the kindness. The res- are you responsible? Are you prompt? Are you responsive? Are you willing to learn? Mm. But if people come with an ego, like that's just like for me, a non-starter. Mm. Okay. Last question. You have 750 employees and 50 franchisees probably and still counting. Um, did you believe me when I said your one truck would make a fabulous franchise? Honestly, I've never asked you that. Did you believe me or did you think I was nuts? We didn't even know what franchise meant. So uh, <laughs> we just knew that when you walk in, we always say it, when you walk into McDonald's that you know that the cheeseburgers are the same, the French fries, the menus are the same, that it's replicable and it's scalable. So my answer to that is without truly knowing what all goes into a franchise, I 1 billion percent trusted when you said, hey, this truck works in Los Angeles. You can take those and pluck them all throughout the country and find great people to run them and great markets to be in. I mean, that that is just such a simple concept to scale if you do it correctly. So I did believe you, but I didn't know the beginning of how much work it would take. Yeah. I, will, oh, I will say this. I had no clue what franchising meant or was. <laughs> so it was hard to say whether I believed you or not. Um, but I will say that even after understanding what the goal was, I, I would never have believed that not only we would have so much success, um, or that other smaller elbow cities like Raleigh or Pittsburgh or Columbus would be even better than Los Angeles. Yes. But, but more importantly, and we just got back from our franchisee retreat, our company-wide retreat last week in Turks and Caicos, I never would have imagined that we would have the relationships that we have mm-hmm. with people on a business, you know, it's a business level. We have such fantastic relationships Mm-hmm. Um, and we, you know, it's, it's like family and it's the way we feel about you. It, and that I think is the best surprise. So no, and you get all the credit. So clap it up, Jim. Oh, oh no, no, I'm just happy you're making know. the money, but would you believe me if I said that five years from now, you will have probably a three to 500% increase. What do you think about that? I said, let's do it. Let's like, do it. I like that number. That's good. You and know, I'm willing to bet $5 on it. Five bucks? Wow. Yeah, you're very confident. Oh, no, Barbara believes so much in us. She's putting a $5 bill down. Huh. I totally believe that, honestly. Yes. Yeah, we yeah. hope so. As long as it continues the way we have it, like, we're yeah. very, very excited, very thankful. And um, it starts with the culture, you know, and I think that's the for, mm-hmm. for young people. It starts with culture, kindness, happiness, the way you treat people. You do a great job of that. And um, it's a great example. And sometimes the more simple, obvious choices and ethical choices are the ways that you can become the most successful. Obviously, I will say this, Barb, you told us probably a week after Shark Tank, maybe a day after you said, there's going to be so much stuff that comes your way. Get rid of it all. Don't just focus on the food truck that makes you money. The one truck we had at the time. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about literally 10 years later, we've done some other things, but it's really truck and restaurant driven. It's cousins made lobster way. And when you talk about franchising and scaling, like our franchisees are scaling now. They go from one truck to two to three. I mean, it's just so replicable that they say, I'm going to double my sales or triple my sales and keep going. So it's, it's even gone into each specific franchisee that, that scalability. It's wild to think about. It's it's such a joy to watch truly. And you so deserve your success. I'm really so very happy for both of you. You deserve much more in fact. So best of luck. And thanks very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. See you around town. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Business Unusual, Extra Credit with me, Barbara Corcoran, brought to you by my good friends at at and Business. I've certainly learned a lot today, and I'm sure you did too. But be sure to check out our earlier episodes for more tips and tricks to move your business ahead. Thanks for watching. For more videos from at and Business, click subscribe.